Seriously, I'm not messing around in Soccer We Trust YouTube fam because we have legendary U.S. Men's National Team goalkeeper Tim Howard on the show. So hit like and subscribe to show your appreciation for Timmy and let's get after it. Yes! What is up everyone and welcome to Nick Romano's favorite podcast It's Soccer We Trust. I'm Jimmy Trashcan, Cream Cheese, Conradino Conrad alongside Charlie Chuck Wagon Davies and Hollywood Heath Pierce. And we're going to hit the pause button on our preview for the U.S. Men's National Team versus Saudi Arabia for a moment because we have one of the all-time greats for our national team joining us, Mr. Tim Howard. But before we bring him on, Chuck, I want to go to you first. What do you want to ask Timmy? What do you want to get into with him? I, I want to get into the center back partnership in front of him, the striker uh, for, the, for the U.S. Men's National Team in terms of long ball setting the press, what he thinks about that, as well as playing out of the back. If you're a keeper – and you don't have the best feet. Should you be playing out of the back? Should that be so held with such importance with this group? You, as well you need as him to answer backs? that. You need him to answer that, Charlie. <laughs> no, well, it, it'll be good. It'll be good having it come from the man. One of the yeah, goats, then, then right? it's absolute. Then it's he absolute. just wants the validation. Yeah. He just wants the validation. <laughs> validated, okay. right? uh, yeah. So there you go. All right, and Heath, how about you? What do you want to get into with uh, Timmy? Oh, I mean, a little bit of nostalgia. I think is important just to to reset. Um, kind of kind of where we we've come from to get to this point and and sort of how we got to the to points where you're playing confidently as a national team so like charlie similarly um every every generation has different weaknesses throughout different lines of their team and the way that they play you play generally to your strengths coming off of that last game clearly didn't play to very many strengths if if any uh so kind of where do we go from here is what i want to know yeah those are good questions and i look forward to getting into it so let's get to our tail of the tape everybody Standing six foot three inches, weighing 194 pounds. It's the most capped goalkeeper in the history of the U.S. Men's National Team who set the record for saves in a World Cup with 15 against Belgium in the round of 16 in the 2014 World Cup, probably because he was bored because that's just what he does. He also is probably the only player in the history of the sport to play for the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars and Manchester United, but spent the bulk of his career with Everton, where he's considered to be one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League at the Pride of North Brunswick, New Jersey. Timmy! Hey, what's up, man? Great to see you. I, I've been I've been introduced a lot, Jimmy, and that's the greatest ever. Yes, I mean, I'll take it. And the fact the fact we got the band back together, I mean, look at us. Good that it's good to be on with you guys. Great, great, Timmy. So first and foremost, uh, I see that you live in a house with Visa behind you. Tell us what's going on. Tell us what's going on with Visa and, and why you're here. Well, listen, I think it's it's always been important for me to use my personal platform for things that matter. Uh, and, and personal finance education has been uh, been incredibly important uh, both to me and to Visa. Look, you know, when, when I when I look at the new financial soccer game, uh, small business has been important to Visa throughout the pandemic, and their support of that. This new game has women's teams as well, and so obviously, uh, with the partnership with the World Cup, it's been uh, it's been a pretty cool partnership. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. So tell, tell us more about this online game, though, because I think you know that we're all competitors here. We like to compete. Like, wh what do we got to do in this game? Well, it's simple. It's free, right? And so you can go to financialsoccer.com. Uh, you can play. You can download it uh, at the app stores. And look, it's just it's a, it's a tool that will, you can look at learn about budgeting and crypto uh, if, if, you're in, if you're looking to start a small business. Again, very simple tools uh, that I think go a long way. Okay. Now I heard there's some component where we can do like U.S. versus Mexico, and hopefully there's an algorithm in place that the U.S. always wins. I'm just throwing that out there, but uh, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> especially if you're between the sticks. Uh, uh, so I love this financial soccer <laughs> stuff in general because I think this is a course that all of our young people should take in school, and it just seems like it's something we we kind of bypass and like we got to learn about something else instead. But you're like, well, this is the real deal. So I, I, it's very cool that this. Is, exists and i'm glad that you and visa are behind it i hope you, I hope you pick tails yeah listen i think it's a i think it's something that 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 we overlook very often um and and that's part of the reason why the game was created because it gives uh, it gives all people young people um people who are trying to start businesses no matter what what age gives them the opportunity to learn all right cool so i see us here apparently we have to answer some questions along the way i'm going to pass those over to, to heath and charlie when they end up showing up but uh <laughs> We, we better hit one top corner, Heath. That's that's all I'm saying at this point. Heath, what are you saying about all this financial literacy? 
No, I love it. It, it. it makes me question why Charlie has 10 houses and why he decided to go down that route. But, you know, that's not for me. That's not for me to solve that. He might have to go through this process to figure out uh, was were those good decisions or bad decisions, you know? <laughs> well, Charlie, answer this then for us. You have 20 seconds. What's the safest website for online shopping? What are you going with? Mm. I'm going to go with uh, Nike.com. Nike.com. <laughs> he clearly has shares in Nike.com. Here we go. <laughs> unbelievable no, i don't think no. that's gonna happen no um it's it's important i mean uh think about how, how people can build wealth for themselves and, and support their families so um tim well 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 uh well, 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 mexico well, just got the ball with, mexico uh, yeah. just got the ball way to go charlie way to go charlie. Charlie. you answered poorly we were all playing together that's kind of how it happened mexico had a lot of the ball <laughs> a this lot game, of the ball this game is a very, lot of chasing accurate. all he needs that, all he needs is that one chance tim and he'll go be doing the stanky leg in the corner you oh, know in azteca remember, you know how it goes days? Yeah, the good old days. Keith, you answering this one? A debit card can be used to pay for groceries, gas, mobile phone bill, all of the above. We got this, Heath. Uh, got I'm going Heath. with four, all of the above. That's a great choice. All of the above. And uh, I think you're right. That was great. Money. Oh, yes. yes. Give us yes. the ball back. Yes. Let's go. Let's get that, that, that back. Transition back. moment. Transition moment. What is happening? Oh, no, what? <laughs> oh wow. Went for, why would he not shoot there? I don't know. Wow. No Very chicharito of him. It wasn't this Charlie. Was, this this Charlie was like the team. this was like the Gold Cup final when they went up one 0 and then they could have kept scoring. Well, they did keep scoring, they and did. then uh, <laughs> but uh, but they just kept moving the ball around on us, making us chase it a little bit more. All right, here we go. To practice good digital security on peer to peer payment platform, one, never send money to someone you don't know. Two, if you're buying something, see it in person before paying for it. Three, keep your apps up to date so you have the latest security patches for all of the above. You know, what? I'm going to answer this. It's got to be all of the above. I'm going all of the above. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. <laughs> and hopefully Timmy makes a big save here. Because there's a diving yeah. header. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, right. Hey, what's the point of working hard if I don't get rewarded here? <laughs> Incredible. Oh, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was a, it was a tidy it. finish, though. So clearly it wasn't Tim and goal. Neither, ne not, none, of, none of us were on the field, I think, for that. But no, it's a uh, conversation for another time. Yeah, yeah. All right, Timmy. So let's talk uh, about your position first with the current U.S. men's national team players. And Charlie had a good question. Maybe I'll steal it here. But uh, what kind of advice would you give to Matt Turner or Zach Steffen now? We're 90 minutes away from starting our first World Cup game against Wales on November 21st. Yeah, it's uh, the goalkeeper part is interesting. I think that uh, for me, I always thought, you know, playing in friendlies, playing in, in CONCACAF and then playing in the World Cup. I think there were stages and there was levels. For me, the windows used to always open and shut so quick in World Cups. You know, if a guy was ready to take a shot and you get set and, and he sees a pass, he, they're so talented. You can see the pass and then the goal is wide open. It, it's, you have to be match sharp and, and, and match ready. Um, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. And I, but, but again, I also think that the pressure and the lights and the, the enormity of the, of the the tournament of the World Cup also allows you to thrive off that pressure too. So um, good luck to them both. I mean, whoever gets to start will be very interesting. Looking looking ahead beyond beyond this tournament uh, into 2026, obviously, I think historically, we've always seen uh, a starting goalkeeper consistently, right? I don't think we necessarily have that now. Looking four years ahead, do you think there will be more clarity on that? We've got Gaga Slonina coming up, or is it too far to be, out to be able to predict some of that? Yeah, I think it was a perfect storm, uh, unfortunately, for, for this cycle. In four years, I, I do. I think that if it is Turner or, or Stefan um, or any, anybody who comes uh, comes up, I think they will be playing regular football. Like, I, I think the fact that uh, at the highest level, I think the fact that um, Zach had to go on loan and, and Matt, obviously, it's a chance for a lifetime to go play for Arsenal, even, at, even as a, a backup goalkeeper, you have to do it. And so... Again, it, it was it didn't line up perfectly, but in four years, yeah, I think that I think that needs certainly more clarity. Timmy, can you talk about the importance of playing and getting to rhythm and form? Because your first season with Manchester United, your goalkeeper of the year, and then the the two next seasons uh, it was a bit of a struggle. Then Casey Keller starts the World Cup. If you're playing every every week, you're the starter, right? And and then 2010, 2014, you're the guy in between the pipes. How important is it for Zach Steffen, Matt Turner, even though those are the front two, they're not playing every week. And in terms of building out of the back, getting into a rhythm with their center backs, 
Where do you see this team moving forward, given the, the fact that your top two keepers are playing every week? Yeah, it's a it's a heck of a selection uh, dilemma for Greg Berhalter. I mean, I, I I would say this. I know I know that Matt Turner will probably get a lot of the Europa League games. You know, so you're probably looking at five, six, seven games. Um, if Zach Stefan is playing every week at Middlesbrough, uh, and he comes to his injuries, and I think you have to play the goalkeeper who is um, playing every week. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that's just normal. It is. It's normal as a, as a rule of thumb, right? Like if, if all of us, if, if one of us played the same position and, and, and they were getting the selection and they weren't playing every week, we'd, we'd all go knock on the manager's door and say, hang on a second. I play the same position and, and I play every week. I have to be playing. So I think that's uh, that's kind of the rule of thumb for me. Uh, but it is, it's, it's a selection nightmare for sure. All right, let's take a look ahead now to 2026 then, because I want your thoughts on Gaga Slonina, obviously making a big move from the Chicago Fire to Chelsea. You made a similar move, as I mentioned in my best intro of all time. Appreciate you saying that once again. From Metro Stars to Manchester United, what do you think about his prospects and, and obviously any advice you can give to him as he makes a, a pretty pretty big move over across the pond into the Premier League? Um, look, he's, he's young, and I'm excited – I tell you what, for the first time in a very long time, I've not, I've not seen him play in person. Um, and it is something that, I don't often say this, but it is something that I, I'm looking forward to seeing him play. I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to buying a ticket and going and watching him play, wherever that wherever that is. Um, Casey Keller said this to me almost 20 years ago. He said, you can't judge a goalkeeper until they played 100 games. Like, you can't actually yeah, that makes say, sense. I think this person is really good or, or not until they played 100 games. Uh, and that, and that's that's been true for me. I, I I stand by what Casey said, and so love his prospect. I think there's um, I think there's some really good tools there, uh, and I think as a young goalkeeper, as you gain momentum, you almost sadly, and I hate to say this, you almost have to hit that bump in the road, get knocked back, and then everybody's now the eyes are watching. Now the eyes are saying, okay, how is he going to handle this? Mm-hmm. Um, but I like it. I like it. You know, if it goes to Chelsea. Uh, the pattern has been that he's probably going to go on loan, right? It's mm-hmm. normal. Um, does he get lost on loan, as we've seen with a lot of the, the Chelsea players? Or does he stand out so much that he's able to get back into the first team or make get a move to a, to another club? Um, big challenges for him. Big challenges for him. But, but, but that's exciting. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, center backs in the national team, the situation with the center backs, considering – we saw in this last game, I personally thought we departed from this a year plus ago of saying we wanted to play through everything. We wanted to play out of the back. We know how Greg would prefer to play, and it seemed like we established a reality uh, along the way. But then going into this game, there was a lot of turnovers, right? Uh, what seemed like a record turnover, 50-plus turnovers in our own half. Do you think it's a uh, – I mean, clearly, I, I think I know the answer here, but what do you think the best pairing is in how we approach the World Cup versus an idealistic way of playing? Well, it's a, it's a hard question. Even what, what the best pairing is and what we have on offer are, are probably two different answers. Um, you know, I, I, I do. I like the center backs, um, you know, that, that played in the last game. I, I think that it's the that doesn't play their strengths. The, ter- the amount of turnovers in our own half, as you mentioned, is it's an impossibility. It, it can never happen again uh, if, if we expect to win a football match at that level. Um, you know, I think – the, what what I learned, well, the question I had coming out of that last game was this. You guys all can appreciate this. It's really good and well to have a game plan. But when when those lights come on against Wales and that first turnover happens and one whistles past the post, do they look at each other and say, okay, we keep playing, we keep sticking to this? Or do they go, oh, my God, we're actually in the thick of it now and then hit, hit the panic button? You all know as – as soccer players, <laughs> that's how it happens. We can, we can say Send it. Send it. <laughs> we can say all the things in post game and media that we want about sticking to game plans, but you understand that when the stakes are as high as they are, things change. So I, I'm curious. I'm curious as a fan and a former player to see how that works. But I do. I think I think those two, um, you know, Walker uh, and Long, they they can they can play. They can head it. They can kick it. They have the ability to pass through lines when, when given the opportunity. But um, not like that. 
in, in your opinion, what's the biggest area of concern with this group? Is it the the lack of a number nine finishing and 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 finding consistency in that position? Is it the center back pairing and or is it just overall the way of playing, not having an idea? true identity and being able to adjust in, in real time in a game. Like you said, if things aren't going well and we're trying to build on the back, screw those plans. Yeah. Let's play into the channels. Um, Charlie, probably all of the above. Um, but I think, I think striker for me, look, I, we've all been around a game a long, long time and uh, goal scoring wins games. You know, I, I think that's probably the most obvious thing I'll ever say, but for me, it's always a striker. It's of always course. a striker. The it's keeper always, Course. It's always been, <laughs> um, you know, Brian McBride, you know, who, who who you could rely on in 2002. You know, you have to be able, when you're the U.S. team, and, until someone proves me wrong, when you're the U.S. team and you're going to be under it, there are going to be certain matches where you have to rely on a striker who's done it for you before. Look, I, I watched game. I played with Brian McBride, but I watched games, and I thought, I, I don't know how we're going to win, but if we do, it'll be off the head of Brian McBride. You know, play with you and Josie. You know, Confederations Cup 2009, that's our, our glory years. Um, didn't know how we we're going to win. Just needed to keep it clean at the back, and you guys would find a way. And, and the numbers spoke to that. Uh, and I just don't know if this current group, talented front players for sure, for sure talented, but I'm talking about pure production. Who sticks the ball in the back of the net? Because ultimately, the chances in a World Cup come few and far between. Sometimes they don't come until the end when you get tired, or maybe they, they, they happen – right in the beginning of the game when guys are cold and not on it, but you need to recognize goal, goal score. All right, we're talking with legendary goalkeeper for the U.S. men's national team, Tim Howard. 121 caps, most caps for a goalkeeper ever in our program, and also an ambassador for Visa. Go to financialsoccer.com to learn more about what Tim is doing to help promote financial literacy for small businesses and especially younger people who can learn a lot more about it. And there's a cool game attached to that. All right, Tim, well, speaking about one of the players, who could be hitting the back of the net for us, but doesn't play the striker position, Christian Pulisic. Now, fun fact, you guys are kind of got a interesting background. You wrote an autobiography in 2014, and Christian Pulisic just dropped a book as well. Uh, so I don't know. I don't think he's lived long enough to, to, to write too much of a book. I don't know how many chapters are in that Has book. Has he played but, 100 games? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if he played 100 games yet. Can he speak to that? But, but talk to us about Christian Pulisic and, and how vital he is, because I think we, we noticed his absence against Japan. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he is, I think he's the most talented player uh, that we have on the U.S. team. That's probably, that's probably pretty simplistic to say. Um, but you need your big players to show up in big moments, right? And, you know, I talk about being counted, as, counted on as a goal scorer, but you, you need your captain, you know, and he's that. You need um, Champions League experience, Premier League experience, Champions League winner. Like, you need, you need all of those things. You need that bravado. Uh, from him, and, and it's and, and when and when it's not there, absolutely, it's glaring that that you, you miss him. So, um, you know, I'm interested interested to see obviously in this in this next game the influence. I think he'll have a lot of influence. I think he is a type of player who makes players around him better. You know, which is the greatest compliment you can give to any player. Um, and I, like I said, they have talent in that front area. They have talent, and if he can be the key cop to that and bring the best out of those guys on either side of him, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for him. Yeah, you know, talking a little bit about Pulisic situation here, um, obviously irregular club minutes, always in the media, always in the press, at least on our side of 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 the pond, uh, so to speak. I mean, how do you manage it? I mean, Tim, obviously there was there's a period of time I'm sure that you went through where you were starting and then not starting. How do you manage that staying sharp, especially a period like this where you're going into a World Cup, you have a lot to prove and potentially, uh, you know, your next move on the line? I mean, what 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 I guess advice would you give to Christian Pulisic when, you know, knowing you've gone through maybe a similar situation? Yeah, I, I think that some of the criticism has been unfair on Christian. You know, I. I think uh, under Thomas Tuchel, there was obviously a, a riff. You know, there was a riff between Thomas Tuchel and a few players, but uh, it seemed as if he, he couldn't do any right. And when I watched him play, um, one, when he came on as a sub, he was fantastic, right? And so I don't buy this idea of, of, of a super sub. You earn your minutes. And so every time he came on, I thought he did really well. Uh, and, and, and I thought he earned the opportunities, which obviously didn't come under Tuchel. And so... It's, it's not easy to stay sharp, but I also think for a player like him who, who at least is, get, is getting some semblance of minutes, I know iron sharpens iron. He's in that environment every day with those players. Uh, he still is getting game time. So I'm not as worried about Christian Pulisic um, as obviously the goalkeeping situation where 
that's a little bit different because of how static it is when you're in training. Timmy, I'm interested to, to know what you think of, of a player like Jordy P. Folk. So the guy is scoring for the top team in the Bundesliga. It's undeniable, knowing that we have a weakness of a nine. And I, I think he's a different type of profile than, than the, the nines that we have currently. Is this a player that you anticipate making the squad just because he's continuing to produce in a top league? Or do, do you take the, the side of he doesn't really fit with what we do, given that maybe – you got to adjust and you got to lump it into the box. You need a big target. Do you think there's still a chance for him to make the squad? And should he? Uh, do I think there's a chance? Yes. Yeah. Should he? Yes. Um, again, I don't know if he will, but I think your points are all valid. And, and I, I'm certainly on that side of things. I think when you look at a World Cup roster, 23 players, um, probably going all the way back to like Theo Walcott, right? 16 year old. Like, I think there's opportunities to take a chance on at least one of those positions, right? And And it should be. I, I understand the concept of like maybe he hasn't been in the process through you know for for the entire time, but when it comes to goal scoring, what we want our goal scorers to be selfish, egotistical, goal hungry. They don't have to be, they don't have to be fully team oriented, in my personal opinion. And so when goals are at a premium, I think you have to take a chance on a guy like him because he, he, even the fact that he's the current form that he's in, I don't care what he did two years ago, I don't care what he does in two years. But in the you know in the last eight weeks or so, and then in the next eight weeks, that's the only thing that really matters to the to the U.S. team, right? So I think there's an opportunity to take a chance and take a flyer on them. Um, so hopefully they do. Tim, I think confidence is a hell of a drug. So I I hope that uh, they consider bringing Jordy Pifak because he's got a bunch of confidence now. Speaking of confidence, there is a player that you played against back in the day in the 2010 World Cup, the last time we played against England in the biggest competition in the world. Jamie Carragher, who works for CBS Sports and Paramount Plus, he predicted that England would win 4-0 against mm. us on November 25th. Let's take a look at that video so so you can get the raw footage of mm. this, Timmy Howard. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, Jamie Carragher. Come no, out 2022 here FIFA that. World Cup draw put England and the United States together in Group B. Fans on both sides of the Atlantic immediately thought of Rob Green and Clint Dempsey. Back at the 2010 World Cup in South Africa, Rob's error allowed Clint shot to squirm over the line. Thank you, Rob Green. US hey, got that hey, one, Clint, one had, had, Clint had uh, today, CBG just twir the two twirling men are now both twisting. On the same team. I'm a did. CBS oh. sports team and they are here. Knowing who our number is. And what you said before about getting over the mistake, that is the sign of, of the character. Well, it was in there somewhere. We're having some, some difficulties. But awesome. at some point, Jamie Carragher goes, we really just rolled that so we could like, well, suck it, Rob Green. But but uh, what, what, what do you think about his prediction? Because 4-0 is not very flattering for us. Uh, I might take 4-0 at this point. I think that, um, you know. 4-0 for us, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, look, I think this is a fantastic England team. That being said, they're not playing very well currently either, um, but they're, for me, still one of the most dangerous teams. And, you know, that was the first thing, Jimmy, I thought about when I watched the last U.S. game. And I thought, if we turn that ball over that close to our goal that many oh, times, it's a wrap. good gosh, against England. I mean, their, their players one-on-one -on -one are so talented, let alone, um, you know, their front players. So I, I do. I, I think that game has to be managed. You know, Jim, I think, I think it's a World Cup. I think you play three games. You don't have to win them all. And I think there are, as you all understand, there's going to be certain moments that have to be managed, whether it be goal difference, whether it be playing for a draw. I think that's okay as long as you can get through the group. And I think the, I think the England game, uh, yes, it, it could get out of hand given given the, where both teams are, but it needs to be managed. Do you think that, you know, again, looking at this last game, uh, it just felt like a massive departure from what we just accepted the team as to be. Again, you know, we've all been in matches, even with the national team, where you're trying something, right? Even after a few, you know, keep trying, keep trying it. We're trying to work on something, work through something. That just seemed like a massive departure in terms of, like, the expectations of the players. When I look at Walker Zimmerman, he slid straight into the national team because he, be, he was a predictable center back, right? Big in the air, organized. And because we decided when we don't bring in a Tim Ream or John Anthony Brooks, we don't want to play. We don't need, need those guys to make the game for us. Do you think that we're closer to a game plan than, than, than you know, and obviously each match is going to be different in a World Cup, but closer to a game plan in terms of how we're going to go about getting results and this was just a one-off? Or do you think that we're still, you know, as, as Jimmy mentioned the other day, 
tinkering with 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 how it is we want to actually go into a World Cup because it feels a little bit late for that. Um, I've heard I've heard it, I've seen it, uh, and, I, and I've, I've I've read it right. Like that we we thought we departed from that way of playing, and it felt like we've gone back. What I think there's a game plan. I do, and, and, and look, I know Greg doesn't have a lot of time with these players. He's at this game, next next game, and then off the World Cup. Keith, what I what I would love to see, which I didn't see, is this. And I, and I can tell you that I've been there. I can't speak for you guys. I'm sure you have. I've been there. I've been a part of teams that want to play a certain way. Winning football matches is the only thing that mattered to me. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we gave the ball away, I don't know, 54, 54 times in the first half. As a player, in our own half, as a player, that's not good enough to me, right? Where leadership is involved is this it's nil nil. We've given the ball away two handfuls of times. I want to see my goalkeeper. Certainly, my center backs go. We're hitting it up there, and I know in ten minutes, when the twenty minutes when the whistle blows, the gaffer is going to give me a talking to, and I'm going to stand up in the dressing room and I'm going to speak to the gaffer and I'm going to say, "Oh, that's fine, that's fine. We departed from the game plan, but if, we, if I didn't take that on my shoulders, gaffer, we'd have been four 0 down. So yeah. something has to change. Right. I, 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 I hold my hands up. Who, who is that guy? Right. Who is that guy? And so being able to be strong enough as a leader to challenge. The manager, not not question the manager, but challenge the matter manager and say, I know this is what you want, but guess what? I want to win the football match. So we can change something now. Maybe you take me out of the game, but that's how that's how it is. And that's that's real true leadership. Don't know if they have that because if they did, quite frankly, you wouldn't give we would have saw it. Right. Saw it. And and yeah. people say, Well, that's the experience, right? They're giving these these players the opportunity so that, you know, three years from now they look back and go, Oh, we should have done that, but now we know what that feels like. We're trying to say, hey, pre- we're going to try and prevent you from going down that path. We want to let you know now that you got to do it. So it started term- at the beginning of the second half, by the way. Like the second yeah. half, they did start to lump a few balls, and we started to push up underneath. But they had but a half time talk. Came from the- yeah, exactly. That, that right. probably came from the manager again versus the leadership of the players on the field. I think it's a great shout. So if, if we're looking at this World Cup and you're looking at the group stage, England, the top team, with our talent, we should get out. We should we should get the better of Wales, and we should get the better of Iran, ideally. But in your mind, tactically, how do we do that? Is it kind of going back to 2010, Spain, Egypt? This is our game plan. Egypt was, we're aggressive. We got nothing to lose. Let's play, play, just play normal. We're playing free. And then we capitalize, boom. Spain, it was, hey, we're taking Xavi and Xavi Lonzo out of the game, force their center backs to beat us. Similar to what Japan said, hey, come, we'll, we'll allow you to make the game. And then just defend first. And then everything else is extra credit. Counterattack, set pieces, allow your creative players to be creative with space, but we're going to defend first. Do you do you, do you think that's the way to get through? Uh, I that's the billion dollar question, Charlie. I, I think I think versus Wales and Iran, I think that we have the ability to play to play through lines to in certain, certain cases probably even dominate possession uh, in periods of the game. The big question, as I said, for me is is there a plan B? I don't think you can play that way against England, and that's okay. Right. I said the group has to be managed. Um, if if the the idea is to subscribe solely to that version of playing, I think the England game could get out of hand, right? And so uh, I think I think there has to be some flexibility within the team, um, and maybe you know, does this team have the ability, as you said, to be under pressure against England and go, you know what, we're bunkering down for the next twenty minutes. We've just got to see this thing at halftime. Have we seen that? We haven't, but do they have the capability to do that? So, Tim, it's tradition here, and we know we got to let you go. We're your busy guy for for obvious reasons. You're not only handsome, but super talented, and all the good stuff that goes along with that. But, but <laughs> one of the questions we like to ask is trading jerseys. One, I don't even know if goalkeepers trade jerseys after games. That's one. I don't even know. I don't think I've ever seen yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I've ever second, seen it. Second, second. Oh, don't don't no. chime in here. Oh. Don't chime in. Uh, no, Keep no. Going. Listen, real quick. By the way, it sounds like, speaking of financial literacy, Jimmy's really buttering you up, Tim, and I think he might come ask for a loan soon. I mean, I feel like he's a lot. He might be financial coming. Financial these, are the people, com, these are the people you got to watch out for because he's going to come soon and be like, hey, man, you know, can I borrow? Can you, can you, can you fill my pockets a little bit? <laughs> I said nice things. So, 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 Tim, the question is: Have you traded jerseys with anybody, and and who's the best one you've gotten, or do you have a regret of not trading jerseys with a player that you wish you would have? He don't don't chime in here. Just don't um, regret. I have a ton. We yes, we've traded jerseys. Tons of regrets. Um, 
Wayne Rooney in the 2010 World Cup, I traded with, and that was awesome because of the moment and, and all of that. Um, but the funny one, which I, well, I'm telling you not to chime in, I'm notorious for like going to swap jerseys with someone and then telling me like, like they don't even know who I am. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> and, and, and Zanetti for Argentina, I thought, I'm going to get this guy's jersey. I love it. And I've gone to trade jerseys with him and he gave me the Mutombo finger wagon. Oh, so, hell no. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, I just walked in the dressing room. All, all the players saw it. So, yeah, that's a, that's a not so funny moment. That, that, that uh, I had Raquel May do that to me when I played against Argentina, too. So maybe it's an Argentinian thing. I don't know. I had the whole Span I had the whole Spanish national team say they were giving it to the, they promised their grandmother. Each one of them said the same thing. So I was like, it's grandma day here at 2.30 like in the morning here in Santander, Spain. So I get it. You know, I got a, I got a full team pie to the face. Oh, man. Well, Timmy Howard, thank you so much for your time. Everybody head to financialsoccer.com to learn more about what he's doing with Visa. And, of course, keep up the great work with everything that you're doing. With your uh, with Memphis and with NBC and the Premier League and all that good stuff, Timmy Howard, everybody, absolute legend. Respect. Wow, Timmy Howard. All right, everybody, we're gonna take our first and only break of in soccer. We trust. When we come back, we're gonna preview the last ninety minutes for the U.S. before the World Cup starts against Saudi Arabia. So do not go anywhere. You can stay. The UEFA Champions League. Nine months of heart stopping, hold your breath, acceleration. While Mbappe shines in the city of lights, Benzema's racking up the hat tricks, and the Reds want Mo Magic in Liverpool. This ain't amateur hour. This is the best of the best of the best. This is the UEFA Champions League. Stream every match live on Paramount Plus. Welcome back, everybody. Here in soccer, we trust. I'm Jimmy Conrad alongside Charlie Davis and Heath Pierce. And before we get into this preview, though, we got to do a little recap with our guest, or not with our guest, but about our guest. Heath, I'll come to you. Pretty cool to get Timmy on the show, and of course, uh, to get his insight. I thought he made a good shout about the leadership in particular, not solving problems in game. We've talked about it, but maybe not in the same way that Timmy kind of packaged that that uh, that thought. And I thought he did a good job of that. Yeah, I, I think that leadership thing is is a part that get, is missing right is this idea of of game plans and it it has since the day greg berhalter took the job been him to blame for every single step along the way but we all know that sometimes like you you talked about right you you give the mike tyson quote of like getting punched in the face and and that requires you at times to just change and and very rarely you when you execute a game plan it's pretty fluid and and i think his insights into saying well sometimes you just gotta lump that ball long and and then take it on the chin uh, from the coach at halftime to say, hey, we departed from that, but like you could feel something's coming. And when you're on the field, you can feel when something's coming, especially when your game plan oh. is not going to plan or you know, you're know you trying to get something out of it. Say one, two, and three are the objectives of this game, and all three of them are have gone to crap, like now making those adjustments and playing straight up because you can play ugly as hell and make any <laughs> national team struggle, right? You can, you can, like, you can go back to the, the simple basics and just make it ugly and, and at least survive longer than trying to execute a, a faulty game plan. Well, what's interesting, Charlie, is that Tyler Adams said that the team didn't follow the game plan. And that's why they weren't successful after the, the, the Japan loss 2-0. But, but in some ways, hmm. we're all kind of sitting here going, well, the game plan wasn't working. You had to not follow the game plan because it just the, the Japanese had figured it out. After about 10 or 15 minutes, you could see that they had like. We got it. We understand how they're going to do it, and they're going to continue to do it every single time, and that mm -hmm. felt a little naive from us. Yeah, I, I would say it's what Tim Tim talked about, plan B, but also I'd say plan C because mm -hmm. ultimately, yes, we're missing Eunice Musa. Yes, we're missing Timo Weah and Christian Pulisic and Chris Richards, for for that matter, and Anthony Robinson. You're, you're missing some, some big-time players, but you have to adjust, just like a World Cup, figuring out, okay, well, we have to change – the way we play and play to our strengths right now we thought our strength was this and it's not it is not working so let's adjust let's play down the wide areas let's be a, a counter act attack team for the next 15 minutes whatever it is but figuring out on the fly different ways to have an impact in the game and then for me it's the number nine right i think jordy p folk does not fit in this system as a one striker but you're down a goal you need to play with two strikers guess who's a perfect sub Jordan P folks. So I, I get the understanding of when he's on an Island, he can't dribble. He's not a dribbler. He's not somebody who's going to make runs in the space. He's, he has no speed, but he's strong <laughs> and he's a finisher. <laughs> yeah. This, 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 this. But, but my, my, Charlie Davies uh, descriptions of players are my favorite. Like, it's like, well, he can't do this. He can't do that. Can't do this. Can't do that. But, but he can he do can this. And this is what matters. It's and, my and favorite that's what matters. At the end of the day, you just want somebody who can score. 
having no you're right consistently and find themselves in good spots but what we do know about this game against saudi arabia greg berhalter has already come out according to jeff carlisle uh, one of our friends who works for espn says that ricardo pepe and christian pulisic will be starting this game so now it's pepe's opportunity to to see what he can do right from the get-go i was actually kind of surprised i thought maybe josh Sargent would get the start mm -hmm. given that things felt a little bit more vibrant when he was in but i get the sense mm -hmm. That and this isn't a big surprise. I think most coaching staffs do this, but I got the sense that the coaching staff for the U.S. have already predetermined these. No matter what the result was against Japan, Pepe was always going to start against Saudi Arabia, and that's what kind of bummed me out in some of the stuff against Japan as well. It felt like all the subs, maybe even the tactics to some some degree, were already kind of pre-planned. And mm -hmm. I think what we're trying to say, and what Timmy Howard also mentioned, Heath, was that there needs to be some fluidity and being able to adapt in real time and not waiting till half times to change things or to make subs or whatever that, that you can't just plan everything. Some of it just has to be, you have to have a gut instinct of like, we got to solve this problem now. And it's not what before, we wanted to do, but, but, but this but, is what the game dictates. Before Heath even goes, would you rather play Japan or would you rather play Saudi Arabia? If you need to impress. I need, Saudi I mean, Arabia I'd rather play good dude. Saudi Arabia finished above Japan and in, in qualifying with only one right. loss. Um, yeah. But who would you rather play? Against? I'd rather play Japan. If you want you to, would. oh, no, no, I'd rather play Saudi Arabia Saudi for Arabia. sure. Yeah, for yeah, Saudi yeah. Arabia for sure. Um, Japan, not so much. Japan is, is again, that's a, that's, that's going to be a, a battle, whether it's, uh, you know, at, at, at any point in terms of, of getting a result because they, they do have a game plan. They do have a, a system. They do have a style of play that, that works for them um, across the board. Uh, I forgot what I was going, where I was, where I was going with. Well, it. I was but, just but talking about adapting in real time, which I think oh, yeah, is a yeah. big, and big thing for us. The, the hard part is that if you look at the Nations League, teams are still, I mean, and they're rotating still because you're seeing a lot of the big national teams not necessarily getting results in Nations League right now uh, against against lesser, what I would consider lesser opponents. But we're in two friendlies and we've come off of two friendlies and I think the last game was a wash. But we've all, again, I we've all been in national team games where you go, man, that was bad. You know, um, or that that was rough. Um, and maybe you got out with a point, maybe you got battered. You know, I I have been in the few where you just absolutely get 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 crushed and you go, that's not representative of myself, how I normally play. It's not re representative of my teammates, how they normally play, but something went wrong. And it so many it was enough people where it went wrong for for everyone. I worry though, and and going back to Tim Howard's point, is who is the leader in this team? Is it the 23-year-old or 24-year-old midfielder, you know, or how old is Tyler Adams? Um, 23? He's around 24, there. Maybe? He's yeah. 24. You know, <laughs> it, is it Walker Zimmerman who's spent the bulk of his career um, not in the national team, is now in the national team at the peak of his career? A natural leader, but necessarily not necessarily maybe earned that respect at the national team level. When I think back to leaders in our national team, they were all – long time national team leaders. There was like a passing of the guards of captains and guys who had been around and they, they, they had to cut, you know, they had to prove themselves and earn their way through Tim Howard included who spent years not playing with the national team as, as the number one before becoming the eventual number one, right? You think about Landon Donovan, you think about these generational leaders. And right now we've got a team of people that are the, I mean, who, who would it be? DeAndre Yellen, right? Will be the only player if he makes the team that, that's been to a World Cup or has a significant amount of caps or minutes. How many caps does Christian Pulisic have in the national team, right? He's, he's, he's still young and worried about his own situation. Um, I, I'm wondering who's going to be that one. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I think that was an eye-opening moment to, to, to know, like, there's leadership in those who wear the captain's band. There's leadership in those who score goals. But there is also that, like, locker room guy that can pull a team together and in, in, in the worst of moments, not the best of moments. But also everyone was playing, you know, everyone was fit. Everyone was in mm -hmm. form uh, for the most part. At least they were, they were getting minutes. I mean, I look at T Tim Howard, he had 12 clean sheets in his first year with Man United player of the year. Then next to nothing, didn't play in the world cup was on the bench. Then he got to reestablish himself at Everton. 17 clean, sheet, clean sheets heading into that last season before the world cup. He was a monster at right. that point. Right. So, you have that to rely on as your core. Then in front of him, you had Bocanegra and Onyewu, both World Cup vets, right? You naturally, no matter how young you are and experienced, you always relied on Beasley, Donovan, Bocanegra, Howard. You had those players. This, mm -hmm. te this team has nothing, mm -hmm. right, in, in terms of experience. Right. Now, that's the, the way they chose. Fine. So then it has to come from these younger players who are forced to mature and, I think, 
much Which faster. Which is gonna, than honestly going to bode well for us. Going to bode well for us in 26 because they are right. going to be the Gucci's and the Bocanegras and the Tim Howards next time. But for right now, we are going to get punched, and we've taken a couple punches already, and that's why we're a little bit nervous uh, against how Saudi Arabia. Now Saudi Arabia is pretty solid, by the way. They just played this last Friday against Ecuador, who are one of the four South American qualifiers. That's not an easy region to qualify from. Ecuador got in, and it was zero zero. And if you look back on Saudi Arabia's like last 10 games, there hasn't been, this is more of a gambling angle, but there hasn't been over two and a half goals in any of those games. I mean, they're just really stout defensively. And I think that's going to be tough for us to break them down. Now, all their players played domestically in the Saudi professional league. And I'm sure they have their own <laughs> domestic league haters that are like, oh, why are guys playing in Europe? You know, but, uh, you know, I don't follow Saudi Arabia Twitter, so I can't speak to that. But, but we have a whole, uh, overall, we've played them six times in our history. We have three wins. Uh, two draws and one loss. So I guess that. But Saudi Arabia is in Group C, just so everybody knows for context. Argentina, Mexico, and Poland. And I'm sure yeah, they're being be looked upon out. as the team, as the one everybody's going to get three points against. But to what he said before, they actually finished a point above Japan in World Cup qualifying in Asia. So this is not going to be uh, an easy an easy three points for anybody, and nor an easy win for us. This game is being played on Tuesday. It'll be 2 p.m. Eastern kickoff in Murcia, Spain, that is tomorrow, and we're really excited about that. And of course, after the game, we're going to go live immediately to give you our raw emotion and feedback about what we just saw. And we're hoping that it's a little bit better than what we saw against Japan. Of course, any other lineup changes, Heath, that you want to get into? Anything you want to discuss as it pertains to this particular 90 minutes? Because this is our last 90 minutes oh boy. before we get to go to Woo. a World Cup. Woo, man. Uh, yeah, pressure. I'd like to see, I'd, I'd like to see uh, a different kind of number 10 that we talked about i'd like to see them take that chance it's it's one last chance it might not work but a brendan aronson or or Gio Reyna at the 10 spot uh with with uh adams and and mckinney in there uh i'd like to see a different center back pairing i i still think that uh aaron long and walker zimmerman could do in a a in a good enough job in playing within the confines of what their game is right if i asked jimmy to do certain things uh, differently than I, you know, than, than what he play his strengths are. Uh, I, I, you could probably make it. We could all we could all do it, right? Um, it's it's a, that's a, maybe a, a lesser example, but I'm thinking about telling somebody they can't use their good foot for an entire game. You know, <laughs> like right. you're gonna make some mistakes, and well, I think I we put foot, those two. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you're less bad foot, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, you know, the less of your two bad feet. Uh, <laughs> oh, the, the worst of your two bad feet. Um, but no, I, look, I, I I I'd like to see another center back offering. I'd like to see Sam Vines get a, get a, get another run because I, I still think that there's a good chance that whoever's going to be that left back needs to be could potentially be playing in the World Cup or starting in the World Cup. And other generations, we had cover there. Guys, you knew that could play that position naturally. And right now, we don't. Um, so one of the things, though, I want to jump in and say and is about getting a shot on goal. We didn't get any shots on goal against Japan. Yeah. And I think... There has to be that intent, Oof. right? I know well, it sounds Pulisic, great cliche. Pulisic, Ricardo like, Pepe, Brendan Aronson, Gio Reyna, let's go after it and like try to try to create like some, just get some, that out of the system, baby. I don't even care if you hit one from 30. Like you can pepper the goalkeeper's hands. Let's just get a shot on goal, let that get through, and then just go from there. Obviously, if we can score, we score. But yeah, but that's well, that's I, what I want I, the front I, four I, to be. My, yeah. my my thing would be be a little bit more aggressive as hell in the in the attacking third, and in, in terms of both attacking and defending. And if that gets broken. Drop deep, set your lines, invite Saudi Arabia in, because if Saudi Arabia is just going to defend because they make it very difficult, then don't let them get set in their, their low blocks. Expose them by, in the transition game. That's what I want to see. And then when you get it, go. And typically, you'll have much more space to operate in terms of getting at, you know, finding those those lanes to, to find, whether it's Aronson or, or Pulisic or Pepe, because I think Pepe fits the mold of the striker that Greg Berhalter wants best. And that is why he's getting that opportunity because he gives you, as far as what Greg wants from that position, to, both defensively and attacking with the runs and he's good in the air. I think that's the the perfect striker in Greg's mind of, of the pool for that position. So he'll give him every opportunity to, to get back because of what he did in qualifying. Cause again, that sit, sits with the manager. Man, I, I I trust in this young kid. He came through for me. He came through for the for the country. Yes, he's had a, a tough go of things in, in Germany, but now he's got that move to get his confidence back up. So now if I can get him going against Saudi Arabia, which is a perfect bounce back game for this group, then guess who's starting first game in, in 
in Qatar. Yep. No, that's fair. He's, he's, I, he's got uh, he, Pepe. just has more. I, I think he can have in the worst of games have more impact than others do, in terms of like being able to hold the ball maybe a little bit better than a Jesus for uh, would, or you know he can press similar to that. But I also think he has the ability to finish. Now we know that Ricardo Pepe's missed big chances. All all strikers make miss big chances, but. I do think that when Greg looks down his roster, he's looking at that guy is like, deliver for me. I, I'll make you my number one if you can deliver. Um, and because the situation's better, you know, he's he's going to find minutes. He's going to be informed, but he's got to be able to deliver as well um, on on a game plan that can help this team get results. So, so here's a little story that I think uh, kind of plays into what's happening now. But my daughter doesn't play much. She had a tournament yesterday. This will tie in. Don't worry. But but the the coach and, and she's eleven by the way, and and one of the players in front of her got hurt. It's the final of this tournament, and and he had given her her chances or whatever to play, and she didn't make the most of them. That's fair. But but she's eleven. I want to throw that out there. And and she raises her hand to go in for this injured player, and the coach goes, "You already had your chances," and picks somebody else. And I was like, God damn, that's harsh. <laughs> but at the same time, this is the same. And he's, he's not wrong for saying it's that. It's just crazy that Jimmy's the coach, which is wild. That I know. Well, you know what? I wasn't going to confirm or deny that. <laughs> you had your chance to sit out. But but that's that's what's happening here. And, and I think that Greg can say that. This is obviously, these are grown-ass men uh, and not kids. But And she's going to learn a valuable lesson. And we talked about that on the way home. That said, it's it's you had your chance. So, Jesus Ferrer, <laughs> you had your chance to impress. And, and now it's Ricardo Pepe's turn. And if Ricardo Pepe does take his opportunity, then he's going to be my guy. And, and those, see, are, the, those are the stakes. We, can, we can't like. Dad, well, well, dad, Jimmy, dad, venting, well, in, dad yeah. venting into the U.S. men's national team picture. I, I love yeah, it. I see. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, wait, wait. That's uh, me Bob Bradley. Did Bob Bradley do that for years? Does <laughs> but, he have Michael um, Bradley on his, on his team? Yeah. Can, like dad venting? Is that not? Yeah. He absolutely so down, you had my daughter. Jay Berhalter hired Greg. Like the nepotism is like rampant in U.S. soccer. Okay. So why can't I just bring up an example? Bastard. No, it's it's fine. I'm glad you got it off your chest. <laughs> no, I'm just saying though. <laughs> There's something about taking taking We're the here opportunity. For you, Jim. Here's your chance. Listen, no, I, I I do think saying that, and uh, you know, literally, I remember my first few national team games. Let me go back to that Japan game last time the U.S. played Japan, uh, Jimmy. That 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 we played in, and Bruce was straight up. He was like, "Look, you both had your chances. That guy's ahead of you. He's playing better than you." And 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 so he's gonna yeah, play, yeah, right? And I'm gonna right. keep getting you games because you're in part, you're part of this. But he's the guy I'm gonna go to right now. And it was Todd Donovan at that time. And 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 obviously that was in regards to a, a 2006 January camp where we were playing four national team games uh, in a, in a six week period. But I remember that being like, well, well, okay. Whereas I spent most of my career with coaches that don't say those kinds of things, who don't who 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 are afraid of conflict and are afraid to just be like, say it directly, and then it's on me how I respond. I can go pout mm -hmm. in the corner. I can sulk. I can sulk and then bounce back. I can respond with competition. I can write myself off or I can keep going. And at least you have a little bit of that mentality for the guys who know where they stand and the others can, can, can feed off of that. Or, you know, okay, it's mine now. I better hold on to this ball really tight because if not, somebody else is going to get that chance. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess it's a little off topic, but I'm just thinking about the, the value of, of, of that type of conversation, direct conversation. That's hard to have. Yeah, it is hard to have, and and we learned that with some previous life experiences for you, <laughs> in particular. Uh, I don't know why I bring up old stuff. It's just uh, for you, and, and but uh, anyway, Johnny well, Bornstein. So, so Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> so Charlie. <laughs> anyway. Okay, you have. We know Pepe's up top. We know Pulisic's on one side. Are you on the same camp as Heath that you put like a Gio Reyna or Brendan Aronson at center uh, in the number ten spot, and somebody else out wide? Or do you all, feel like you're going to go all, with a De La Torre again or, no, or Malik Tillman or not. what are you going to do? Absolutely not. All out attack. Yep. And and I want dynamic players. So you give me Reyna at the 10, Aronson, and you have Christian Pulisic and then Ricardo the Cavalry, who, Jimmy. We want who, who, it who seems like people bring, on horses who, who, with flags like we're attacking. <laughs> yes. You know, the cavalry's and, coming. And go. I get, and, I, and I say, you know what? With my four, you go. McKenny, yeah. you're sitting and until that ball gets into that final third and they're dilly dallying and then they need somebody to run, that's when you can get <laughs> that's when you can get involved. Otherwise, you sit your butt back here and you and you're gonna be protecting the midfield. That's your job. You're not just you're not distributing, you're not getting on the ball, you're breaking up plays, breaking you're getting off your foot. That's it. Yeah. And then Jimmy. Tyler Adams, same thing. You you defend Fair. and keep that you you keep that the the center back partnership together. Hey, I don't want to see you guys trying to make the game. None of that. Okay. Um, and, and just go that 
I want to see some speed. Go, let's go. I'm I'm in. You got me. I'm sold. Yes. Uh, Doesn't Charlie seem like one of those coaches who's going to coach at a very high level and in the worst of moments still never say bad words to his team, to his team, you know? (laughs) Like – you get your Art butt and go. It, get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get off Where your like, bottom. Like the most, <laughs> the most running. angry, the most angry you could be at any moment. And you guys are having a freaking stinker. You're having a stinker. You know, like where, where, like you know, you know, he's uh, he's he's real mad, but like he's not really <laughs> delivering the message because there's only certain words that work in this context. You know. But t- you but sit tell your me butt I'm wrong. down then. Tell me I'm wrong. After that Japan game, it's like, hey, you keep your butt right here. And then you four go explore, attack, be aggressive, be creative. And we are going to play into the channels and we're just going to, we will let you guys have fun. We're, we're going to hold this fort tight. Okay. And I feel like that's the only way we're going to start to see something different than, than just like trying to be the Brazil of, of CONCACAF, you know, in terms of, yeah, you can play a certain way versus Honduras at home and El Salvador at home and, and even Canada at home, but not against Brazil, not against England, not against Wales, Iran. So like Timmy said, it's, it's another beast. And, and I feel like this group needs, needs to constantly be tested and pushed. And, and I think if you you put them in a position to succeed, it's about those four going at it. Chris okay, Mackey said, okay, "Go silly, explore, attack." Hey, silly goose! Live, laugh, I don't need love. you to make the game, you silly goose. <laughs> uh, I just need you to win the second balls. You know, that's all. Uh, that's all. Come on! Shout out to the Mac Pack, dude. This is such a great comment. <laughs> hey. Yeah, there's definitely a, a, a midlife crisis help book, I think, somewhere in this. Uh, uh, let's talk about the back four. Six Davies. <laughs> 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 the, the, our, uh, our comment section on YouTube is undefeated. So if you haven't hit like and subscribe, yeah, please do that. If you're listening to us, the come join us on the, the YouTube as well and vice versa. Okay, Charlie, I come to you then. Back four. What are, you, what are you going with? Because it's pretty wide open. Do you give Sammy Vines another run out? Do you bring Scally in? Do you put Des on the left side and put somebody else on the right? Who's partnering in the middle? Is it is it is Walker an automatic? I think he will be starting, but who's going to be playing next to him? And then and then add the goalkeeper mm-hmm. in too. Is it Horvath's turn to get 90 minutes? Or are you going to go with Turner again? I mean, this is what we talked about before these two games started. Are you using these these two games to tinker? Or are you using these two games to kind of fine-tune what you already know you want to play and the system you want to play? And obviously uh, that went out the window against Japan. Yeah, I would say it's still a little bit of both. Let's be honest. No matter how much we don't like Sergio Des defending as a, as a right back, he's going to be starting. He's going to, he's going to start for this you team. you got to play him again. So he's playing again. Roll him out. Sam Vines is the only left back. I, so I, mm-hmm. I, Joe Scally, he's not a left back. I don't want to see him on the left side. So I give Sam Vines another run. Uh, Matt Turner, back in goal. He's your one. You stick with it. That's it. You're the one, Matt Turner. You are keeping this job unless you get injured. That's your job to, to lose now. And then your center back pairing, Aaron Long, Voxerman, did not work. I, I don't want to see it again. Mm-hmm. So ultimately, I, I'd like to see... I think Walker Zimmerman is still going to be the center back. Again, he's like uh, a, when I think of Jay Demerit, when I think of yourself, you guys are fantastic in the air. You're physical, tough tacklers. You're not, no offense. Handsome, thank you. No offense. Not the best with the ball at your feet. I never, I never claimed otherwise. I I know, but not the worst though, Jimmy, not the the worst though by any means. Not the worst. (laughs) So I like that. I like that from Walker Zimmerman that he's tough and he's, he's a big, and you you get that grit from him alongside him. I want somebody who compliments him well. And I think Mark McKenzie give him a go from the start, giving this this group of of, of center backs. However, Chris Richards would ultimately be the best player, and I think he should be starting in come the World Cup in, in Qatar if he's healthy. Damn, you sit wow. your bottom down, Charlie Davies. It's yeah, his hey. turn. Uh, uh, yeah, back just, four. <clears throat> I mean, my back four is 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 similar. I'm. Uh, Again, the, the the one thing I at least give, and Mark McKenzie had some bad turnovers too, um, or a one or two that were were glaring. Um, but but he at least was trying to play with his left foot as a as an he's right footed, but a naturalized left sided player, right? In terms of the flow of the game doesn't shift because you have a right footed player there. He was willing to push forward with it and put it on his a, a tough angle on his bad foot. He was willing to play those entry balls with his left foot, and I think that's really important when you're trying to balance the field a little bit more. Um, and similarly, he's got pace. He's, he's like that there, there's not for a lack of options of players with pace to, to play next to, to Walker Zimmerman. Um, so I'd like to just see that differently. The hard part is, is that you talk about with Chris Richards, 
again, going back to, to, to now until the world cup, I just, and even Tim Howard's comments of like, how much time will he play between now and the world cup fit or not? That, that makes me worried about that sharpness going into a world cup. But ideally Chris Richards is our, is our second best defender behind Walker Zimmerman. Uh, but for this one, I like to see Mark McKenzie, um, I'm torn between um, Vines and Scally only because I think I saw enough of Vines to know that he's probably not ready still uh, in that first half, though. Every player, you could have said that about every player, but I'm saying go with him again because, again, you might have to rely on somebody to start games in a World Cup as a natural left back. Scally is a, is a right-footed player that can play left back, and I just don't love that either. And then right side, I'm saying Serginho Des. So that's my that's my. You have Turner back, in goal? Back. I have Turner in goal, yeah. Yeah. It's so my only concern. I'm going to piggyback on the Scally-Vines conversation. If we're going to have a right-footed left center back, and then you're going to put a right-footed player at the left back position, mm -hmm. you start to really limit. Well, you don't have width either. Your player yeah. front of, in front of them, Christian Pulisic, comes inside. If he sat on the touchline, I'd let you have a, a right-footed left back because yeah. they can drive inside uh, with a little bit of space. But if they're all sitting in the same lines trying to go inside, you, you're you never going to have real width. Yeah, we, we, we definitely miss Anthony Robinson. I'll, I should start there. I, I but I think so that Sammy Vines happened. should start just given – that he, that's his natural position. And we'd be mm -hmm. kind of square peg, round hole if we tried to put anybody else there, including Dest. I think Dest is going to be the right back. I think to what you guys are saying, having that consistency, getting him next to hopefully to be Walker, you know, continuing to build that rapport, Matt Turner in goal. I, I don't know. I think that that I don't want to see Aaron Long. I've seen what I've seen and, and I don't need to see any more uh, of what he can bring to the table. It's either going to have to be Mark McKenzie or, or Eric Palmer Brown. Um, but I think it, probably will be McKenzie and, and for the reasons that you mentioned and there's just something about starting a game that's just different than coming in at halftime 100 percent and 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 I think that I would like to see a team that that is going to be as close to, to what we might see at the World Cup than than still tinkering maybe you know at halftime 60 minutes you can start to throw some guys in and see what it looks like but but that starting starting the game is really really important all right Predictions and then uh, final thoughts or tie those into it to, together. Heath, I'll throw it back to you, your predictions for this game. And as a reminder, we'll be coming to you live right after the game ends against Saudi Arabia tomorrow. It's on FS1 or, or Univision or Tudin or whatever uh, is the channel. That game kicks off at 2 p.m. Eastern. That is 11 a.m. Pacific time. And again, we'll go live right after to get everybody's thoughts. Hopefully they're all positive and happy with puppy dogs and rainbows. But uh, predictions and how do you think this is going to go, Heath Pierce? Final thoughts. Um, I think the U.S. wins this. I, I do. I think we see a, a response performance. That's the one thing I can say this national team has always done well is respond and rebound from, from tough moments. Historically, the national team has done well. There was a little bit of a window there that didn't uh, historically uh, respond. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. I'll, I'll but let you generally, <laughs> generally speaking, I think that's something that that we tap into as as a national team. And so I think it's a win. I'm going to go with. Uh, I, I think it'll be. I think it'll be tight. I, I'm going to actually say. I, I want to say two one. Uh, but I, I'm thinking it'll be closer to uh, uh, a one nil uh, in my book. Uh, but but a solid performance and one that you go okay. This team. This team's up for it. Um, and and just showing that attitude and that response to all of us critics right now that are not oh, convinced. Kevin, Kevin Kennedy, 1-1. One, one. Come on, man. Charlie, what are you I, saying? I'm going 2-0 US. I, I, one, I don't think Saudi Arabia is all that threatening. So um, I, I think, like Heath said, the group responds. Remember, we were covering for CBS. We were covering all the away games. They were all typically all trash, except for that one Honduras game where you're like, oh, my God. You know, Pepe came, for came on minutes. and just absolutely yeah. changed everything. <laughs> But other than that, typically they were trash on the road, and and they'd have the the good performances at home. Now you you can't rely at playing at home in front of your home fans and having a, the nice um, amenities. So I think this group cut, digs deep, uh, and, and I think Tyler Adams is at the heart of it. And Christian Pulisic comes on and makes a difference uh, because he he knows he needs a performance to get him going as well. So I think they get it. I think they get the W two 0 I love it. I love it. I got one zero. I think it's going to be tight. Saudi Arabia don't give up a lot of goals. I think they're really organized. That said, if we score first, it's going to force them to open up and stretch out. And that's probably something that they need because they're probably going to be down against either uh, Mexico, Poland or Argentina at some point. So what are they going to look like when that happens? I think that's where they struggle. And so I think we can take advantage of that. But I, I agree with you guys. And, and obviously our hearts are probably in, in the way a little bit too. We definitely want the U.S. to respond and to play well. So we'll see how they do tomorrow we'll see everybody else tomorrow as well so on behalf of producer des producer alex the wonderful and awesome timmy howard of course thank you 
to him and Visa for letting him come back on the show here for In Soccer We Trust. We hope to have him back very, very soon. And, of course, Charlie Davies and Hollywood Heath Pierce. What time I'm are we going tomorrow? Cream cheese, Connor. We're going right after the game ends, baby. Okay. Whenever the game ends. Game kicks off at 2 p.m. Eastern, so let's just say 4. No, that would be 5 p.m. Eastern. That would be 2 p.m. No, that's way too late. What that's am I yeah. even saying? 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Eastern, so that's uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time. You guys will figure it out. When the yeah. game ends and you're hot and heavy, you want to talk about it, you know where to come. Come to this YouTube channel. All right, we'll see you then. Let's go, boys. Let's get the results.